Welcome to Loyal TV. Join us in Guthrie, Oklahoma, as we follow the tale of the unluckiest outlaw. I think what most people would know about Elmer McCurdy is that he was a outlaw turned mummy. October 4th, 1911, Elmer and a couple of other guys stop a train outside of Okeeza, Oklahoma. And the story goes that they had the intention of stealing the Osage oil royalties that should have been coming in on, on that particular train to be distributed out to the tribe. They stop the train, blow up the safe, and when they blow up the safe, the royalty payment wasn't on the train, so they end up with $46, a couple of bottles of whiskey, and McCurdy took a rain jacket from one of the passengers. A guy by the name of Stringer Fenton, a railroad detective, he takes the posse to the ranch of Charlie Rivard. You know, they, they kind of start moving around the barn, getting themselves into position, and McCurdy starts shooting at them. Fenton says in an interview that it took about an hour for them to finally go into the barn and, you know, see that he was, he was dead. And once they get it to Pahuska, it goes to an undertaker named Joseph Johnson. So after he's embalmed, they never find any family to come and pick him up. The county isn't really willing to pay to bury him. And then finally, after a while, he just, he just put the clothes that he had back on him and stuck him up in a corner in the lobby. And people would come in and look. And it was kind of like the, the big thing to do on, in Paul Husco on a Friday night, you know, go have yourself a, a ice cream soda and look at the dead guy. Elmer is at the, the Johnson funeral home for about five years. Word is spread around that, you know, there's a mummy in Paul Huska. James and Charles Patterson of the Great Patterson Carnival, while they're stopped in Arkansas City, Kansas, decide they're gonna go down to Paul Huska to claim this body. And so they portray themselves as the brothers of Elmer. And so Johnson releases it to him. Well, so within two weeks, he's in a uh, sideshow out in the Texas Panhandle as the outlaw that would never be captured alive. And they held on to the body for about six years. So in about 1922, the Pattersons sell out to a guy named Lewis Sonny. At that point, Lewis Sonny takes possession of the body and begins to use him in his wax museum of crime. He would put Elmer up kind of at the front of the door and people would stick their tickets into his mouth, you know. So, so whenever he's he's found later on, they find all these tickets that were in his in his mouth from from that experience. When they built Route 66, there was a, a promoter that wanted to to make a big deal out of this, and he started this cross country race that was going to start in, in California at the end of Route 66 and go all the way across the country to New York City. Well, with them is a, a carnival and a sideshow and things like that. And, and Elmer is part of that, that carnival. So he travels along and supposedly when the carnival or when the race gets to Oklahoma, they avoid Oklahoma or at least Elmer does. So Elmer's in this movie. And at one point, some people go to this opium den, and if you look real close, you can see Elmer sitting up against the wall, and he's got on this, this you know, silk outfit and little silk hat, and he's holding this big long pipe, you know, in his in his hand, and and there he is. Later on in the movie, somebody ODs, and you see him throwing this body up onto the. Uh, to the examination table where the doctor's gonna try to save, save him, and he flops around so you know, you know it's Elmer. So the son of Lewis' sonny, Dan, eventually sells Elmer and their other displays to a man named Spoonie Singh that operated a wax museum in, in Hollywood. I don't think Spoonie Singh used Elmer that often because he didn't feel like he was lifelike enough. And uh, so he stayed in storage for most of the time that, that Singh actually owned him. Then he ends up at 
the new Pike Amusement Park in Long Beach, California. They pull him out of storage and they paint him with a phosphorescent paint and put inside of the Laugh in the Dark Funhouse. And it was it was an amusement park ride. And you rode around, you know, on a little track in, in cars. And whenever the, the, the cars would come around the corner and the light would shine on Elmer, he would reflect because of this phosphorescent paint. So he's hanging from the ceiling of the ride by a noose. In 1976, the crew of the Six Million Dollar Man, which was this this popular TV show during that era. Um, they come in and they're gonna shoot an episode of the show called Carnival of Spies. And while they're doing that, one of the one of the guys working on set bumps into Elmer and knocks his arm off. When he does, he's, he kind of looks at it and notices that, you know, this arm that he's holding has a bone. So of course they call the police. So stories about this are going out in the newspapers on the AP wire. And in Guthrie, Oklahoma, the first director of the Oklahoma Territorial Museum, Fred Olds, Fred picks up the phone and he calls the LA coroner and he's like, hey, we know who this guy is and we want to bring him back here for burial. He belongs in Oklahoma. He's one of our people. They set up the return and the burial to coincide with 89ers day and they've got men riding on their horses and they're carrying guns all the pallbearers you know in their in their cowboy outfits with their six guns on their hips and they lower Elmer down into his final resting place and they put like three yards of cement in on top of this this you know casket because they don't want anybody to come along and dig him up, and they want him to stay buried, never ever be exploited by people again. It's crazy stories, what it is. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. What does that say about us as a people when we find something like that so fascinating that we're willing to go and stick nickels in the mouth of a dead man? That's kind of crazy. Join us again next week on Loyal TV as we tell more of the best Oklahoma stories you've never heard.